The air is still, thick with dust and the scent of armored prey. A lone Utahraptor, lean and scarred, keeps its body low to the cracked earth. It is an exile. Its target, a Gastonia, is a living fortress. A creature of plates and spikes. A fortress that does not know it is being watched. But the hunter is not the only one. Shadows move among the Cicades. Its former packmates are watching. They hunt the same quarry, but they hunt as a unit. The exile hunts alone. This is not a hunt for food. It is a duel for survival. Chapter 1. The Law of the Pack. This is early Cretaceous Utah, 125 million years ago. A harsh, arid world, balanced on the knife edge of drought. Here, life is brittle. The sun is a tyrant, and water a fleeting promise. In this land, cooperation is not a choice. It is the only law that matters, the law of the pack. And to be alone is to be marked for death. Our protagonist is young, a sub-adult, exiled for a mistake now unforgiven. It bears the scars of its expulsion, but the deeper wounds are those of hunger and of silence. The chorus of the hunt is gone. This world is ruled by apex predators, and the Utah Rotpore is chief among them. A nine-inch sickle claw, a mind built for strategy, a body built for power, but that power is magnified by the group. The pack is the true weapon. They are the alpha, the coordinated matriarch, the brutal enforcers, the new ambis ambitious sub-adult that took its place. And in their world, an exile is just another competitor. Chapter 2. The Cost of Solitude Hunger is a constant grinding pressure. The lone raptor lunges for a small, fast-moving mammal, but its timing is off. It is used to a partner, a flanker, a distraction. The prey vanishes into the rocks, leaving only dust and the ache of failure. This is the curse of the solo hunter. The small prey is too fast, the large prey too dangerous. Without the pack, the arithmetic of survival no longer adds up. And so, it turns its eyes to the impossible, the Gastonia, it is a walking tank, low to the ground, covered in a pavement of osteoderms and crowned with lethal shoulder spikes. A target the pack itself would only attempt with precise, coordinated strikes. The exile shadows it for hours, probing, testing. It looks for a gap, a weakness, a single place the claw might find purchase. It must find the soft tissue of the underbelly, or the throat, a suicidal gambit. The sun reaches its zenith. The drought-stricken land offers one reprieve, a shrinking pool of murky water. The lone raptor approaches, desperate to drink, but it is not the first to arrive. The pack is there, asserting its dominance. The Alpha Matriarch fixes it with a cold, unblinking stare, a silent warning. This water is not for you. The exile retreats, thirst joining the chorus of its hunger. But the pack is not its only problem. This environment is a weapon in itself. The heat, a crushing weight. 
The sky offers no hope. The raptor's energy is failing. Its muscles ache. It has one more chance, one final surge of strength before the end. It returns to the Gastonia's trail, its senses screaming. The pack is also on the move. They have caught the scent, and they are closing in, using the formations of rock to mask their approach. The lone hunter must make a choice. Flee and starve, or strike now and face them all. Chapter 3, The Silent Duel. The exile makes its move, a desperate, calculated burst of speed. It aims not for the armor, but for the leg. The Gastonia roars, spinning with surprising speed, its shoulder spikes aimed to kill. The fortress defends itself. The commotion is the signal. The pack explodes into the clearing. They are a blur of coordinated violence. Four of them. They ignore the exile. Their focus is singular. Two flank left, one faints right. The matriarch waits, analyzing. This is the art of the hunt. The Gastonia bellows, swinging its tail, a mace of bone. The pack hunter shrieks, wounded, but not broken. The distraction is enough. Another raptor leaps onto the Gastonia's back, claws searching for purchase on the armor. It is chaos. The lone raptor watches, caught between its target and its rivals. It sees an opening, a moment of distraction, created by the pack. It must steal what it cannot earn. While the pack focuses on the armored back, the exile darts in low. It goes for the throat, the one soft target. It strikes true. The sickle claw finds its mark, a mortal blow. The great armored beast shudders and begins to fall. But the victory is not its to claim. Before the exile can retreat, the Alpha Matriarch is on it, a blur of teeth and fury. This kill belongs to the pack. The lone raptor is battered, thrown back, its claim erased. It has served its purpose as an unwitting tool, wounded, starving, and defeated. It retreats into the shadows as the pack begins to feed. The legacy, the pack imperative. We look at the bones of Utahraptor and we see a perfect killer. But the bones do not tell the whole story. The true story is written in the gaps between them, in the spaces that imply strategy. The story of the group. This single, failed duel reveals the immense evolutionary pressure at play. To hunt prey like Gastonia or the giant sauropods of this era, solo hunting was simply not enough. The risk was too high. The energy cost too great. Survival demanded intelligence. It demanded communication, social structure, and the terrifying efficiency of a coordinated attack. The pack was the dromaeosaur's greatest adaptation. It was the key to their dynasty. For our lone hunter, the saga ends here. Its injuries are severe, its energy spent. It is an echo, a footnote in a story written by the victors. The Echo.
the law of the pack is absolute, brutal, and necessary. When faced with overwhelming odds, is it the strength of the individual or the strategy of the group that truly defines survival?